I am Mahindri Naidu, a solicitor with the private client legal team at Moore Kingston Smith. And today I'd like to talk to you about lasting powers of attorney with specific emphasis on um, LPAs for your business. I'd like to look at what a lasting power of attorney is or LPA in the abbreviated form, um, advantages having a business LPA, as well as points to consider when making a business LPA. A lasting power of attorney is a legal document which gives a person of your choice, known as the attorney, the ability to make decisions on your behalf when you are unable to do so. There are two types of LPAs. The first one relates to property and financial affairs and allows your attorney to make decisions relating to property, bank accounts, uh, shares that you may hold, and can be used when you have mental capacity. Now, it's important that if you would prefer your attorneys not to be able to use the document until there is an instance where you don't have mental capacity, then you need to make specific provision for this in the document. The Health and Welfare LPA deals, deals with decisions relating to your personal welfare. So any communications with your doctors or choosing a care home for you or making decisions about your medical well-being will be governed by the Health and Welfare LPA. The Business LPA is then a legal document which authorises your attorney to manage your interests which are specific to your business when you are unable to do so. What would happen to your business if you were abroad? involved in an accident or suffered from medical conditions such as dementia and unable to make decisions relating to your business. Who will authorise payments of bills, sign checks or pay salaries? It's very important, I'm sure you understand, that if you are unable to pay simple things like salary bills or your suppliers, this can be detrimental to your business. So a business LPA is important as it protects your interests as well as those of your business. Is a business LPA right for you? The first thing to consider is the type of business that you operate. If as a sole trader, you then it's unlikely that the business will have a separate legal identity to that of yours. So if you become incapacitated, then no decisions can be made relating to your business. Therefore, it's important that you have a business LPA in place. If you are part of a partnership, then you need to review the partnership agreement. Does it make provision for incapacity of a partner? Um, if it does, then it's unlikely that you would need a business LPA. So if in doubt, remember to review the partnership agreement. If there is a need for a business LPA, then make sure that the business LPA doesn't conflict with provisions of the partnership agreement. If you're a director of a company, then you would need to review the company's articles of association. Does it provide for termination of a director's appointment due to incapacity? If there's no provision, it is advisable that you review the articles to include such a provision, as it can prevent important decision making if you do not have such a provision and one of your directors becomes incapacitated. Where there is a sole director, then it's unlikely that the articles will allow for termination um, of a director's appointment due to incapacity. In this instance, it's essential that you have an LPA in place. When making an LPA, you need to consider whether you should have a separate LPA that relates to your personal interests and one that relates to your business fi and finances only. We always advise that where you're considering having an LPA relating to your business and personal affairs, that you have two separate documents with two separate sets of attorneys. So for example, if you want a personal LPA, so relating to your personal finances, your personal bank accounts, your personal property, you could, for example, appoint your partner or your spouse, but where it's a business LPA, then you should consider someone within the business or someone who has the requirements that you need to manage your business. 
So therefore, when choosing an attorney for a business L LPA, you need to question whether the chosen attorney has the acumen to manage your business affairs. Do they understand the type of business that you run? Will they have the time to make decisions relating to your business? Remember that making the wrong choice could affect the profitability of your business. And if you have fellow partners, they could bring a claim against you for appointing someone who is unsuitable. If you do not have a business LPA in place or a general LPA for property and finances, what will happen is that an application would need to be made to the Court of Protection for an appointment of a deputy. This is a very time consuming and costly exercise and could take up to nine months for a deputy to be appointed. And if a suitable appointment or a suitable deputy cannot be found amongst your business associates or um, a spouse or family member, then the court will appoint someone from the panel of deputies, which is usually a professional. And it might be that for your particular business, the appointment of a professional deputy will only complicate matters. Therefore, it's important when looking at your business interests to look at things such as incapacity of a shareholder, director, or yourself if you're a sole trader, and take some advice about putting LPAs in place to protect your business against issues such as incapacity. Thank you.